हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर पीडिया आई एम जितेंद्र त्यागी एंड टुडे आई गोट ए गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गेट सम इम्पोर्टेंट मिनट्स फ्रॉम अवर रेस्पेक्टेड गेस्ट प्रोफेसर अभय करंदीकर सो प्रोफेसर अभय इज सर्विंग एज डायरेक्टर ऑफ आईआईटी कानपुर एंड अर्लियर ही हैज वर्क विद आई बॉम्बे आल्सो एंड ही इज ए बिग नेम इन द फील्ड ऑफ टेली सेक्टर ओके टू एनहेंस द टेली सेक्टर इन इंडिया he has worked a lot of things so today uh, he came to chandigarh for some seminar uh, on some important topic about which i am uh, going to discuss with sir so sir first of all uh, most welcome from the entire student community from the entire teachers community uh, in this chandigarh region and your pedia team thank you thank you very much so sir i have some uh, important questions uh, with your work whatever you have done so first of all i attended your seminar also today okay so your main concern is rural broadband connectivity yes so sir uh, please broadly apprise us about internet and broadband connectivity that is existing right now in india as well as abroad <laughs> so you know as you know that in india uh, there has been a significant development in the terms of proliferation of cellular mobile broadband technology uh we have uh, now a significant proliferation of uh, 4g uh, in india but still uh, a large uh, population particularly in the remote and rural areas still do not have uh, access to uh, uh, you know uh, that kind of a cellular mobile broadband access uh, that you know uh, we should expect uh, the population to have Uh, the uh, the story is uh, also similar in other parts uh, of the world uh, where uh, you know the true broadband penetration in the rural and remote areas uh, is still lacking uh, and lot ne more needs to be done uh, to provide a ubiquitous true broadband connectivity so sir uh, according to you what are the important challenges no i think uh, the important challenges uh, i had already <coughs> outlined in my talk today yes sir. Uh, one of the uh, challenge uh, um, of course uh, is in the <coughs> backhaul networks because when operator wants to deploy a large number of cellular mobile towers in the remote and rural regions uh, it has to also take uh, backhaul to each and every tower and uh, there is a cost associated with the uh backhaul networks uh, you know either in terms of uh, uh, right of way or digging or the cost of the fiber uh, etc so i think uh, backhaul is uh, one problem in providing the ubiquitous uh, connectivity uh, there are other problems uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, the, the business case for the operator because in some of these regions uh, you know there may be very low average revenue per user and it may not make a sense a business sense uh, for the operators to make investment in terms of the network cost uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, the operational cost uh, for the operator so i think these are the challenges so therefore we need a cost effective affordable uh, networking infrastructure uh, where you know the cost of the backhaul is also reduced uh the cost of the power consumption or the energy uh is also reduced uh in order to have a uh, uh wide spread proliferation uh, uh for the operator to make uh, a business case as well okay so sir uh, nowadays every uh, faculty every industrialist okay everyone is talking about this 5g <coughs> so according to your words in brief uh, how we can know about this 5g communication so 5g actually uh, is a paradigm shift from the 4g networks when we went from 3g to 4g the 4g provided a packet based communications with a enhanced uh, throughput but in 5g uh, now we will not only have a enhanced mobile broadband that means you know the enhanced throughput in the mobile broadband but we are also having uh, uh you know uh, configurations uh, like uh, ultra reliable low latency uh, communications and massive machine type communications so these uh, capabilities of 5g uh, will uh, make uh, a very diverse set of applications in use case scenarios uh, which are uh, currently uh, 
may not have been possible with the 4G. So 5G is not just uh, you know 4G with some enhanced throughput. It is actually a generational change and a paradigm shift. Okay. So sir, uh, actually during your seminar, you told us that uh, there may be many benefits from 5G in future. Okay. And uh, researchers should explore them. Yeah. But if we talk about from the point of view of a normal person, we only focus on speed. Yeah. Okay. Every Indian citizen, they think that in 5G, our speed will be more. Yeah. So uh, I read about uh, one article that recently one company from USA tested on 5G and they uh, declared that maximum speed was 800 Mbps. But in 5G, we are expecting more speeds. Can we think about 10 GB uh, speed or uh, more than 10 GBPS speed in 5G if it is implemented completely? Yes, yes. I think uh, <coughs> we can think of. So first of all, uh, uh, in India, the just to answer your first point, uh, uh, in India, the primary uh, broadband device has become the cell phone uh, uh, because we don't have the ubiquitous availability of fiber to each and every home. Uh, so, uh, most uh, people are accessing the broadband through the 5G. So, therefore, the most important use case in India currently is uh, enhanced mobile broadband where we need better and better throughput or better and better speed. Uh, so, uh, 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 so, going forward, once we have the full scale deployment of the 5G, it is possible to get gigabits per second kind of a speed uh, on the mobile. Uh, in fact, uh, the mobile it will become like you know uh, fiber uh, uh, fiber like speeds over wireless so yes. those kind of uh, things will be the most important use case in india but as i already mentioned 5g has other configurations like ultra reliable low latency machine type communications which will open up a lot of possibilities for developing very very inno innovative applications and use cases uh, which have not been so far even thought of. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, everyone has information about 5G now. Through our new channels also we get that 5G. Okay. But today, I knew about a new term. Okay. That is frugal 5G. So, you have worked on that. So, kindly tell us about uh, that. <coughs> what is this frugal 5G? See, Frugal 5G is a working group which we have created within IEEE standards uh, and currently our research group has been contributing to this IEEE P2061 standard which is a Frugal 5G standard. The idea there is to develop a scalable architecture uh, which will enable the deployment of the network in a very cost effective uh, fashion and which will be energy efficient and which will be optimized for the fixed access. So this frugal 5G standard is not developing any new radio access technology. It will use the existing radio access technologies like 4G or 5G or Wi-Fi, but it will provide a scalable network architecture of exploiting these radio access technologies to provide a cost effective and affordable broadband. So that is the reason we are calling frugal uh, in that sense because it will give you an affordable broadband access. Okay, so sir, uh, whenever we study, we listen about this 5G, we also get information regarding some health concerns, health related <coughs> concerns. So uh, such concerns uh, from your frugal 5G no, there are no such health concerns. Uh, I don't uh, believe in those arguments uh, because it is well known that uh, all these radio access technologies, they work in the radio frequency uh, spectrum, which are of uh, non-ionizing nature. Uh, so they can cause some heating effects. Uh, so there is some dielectric heating effects, but uh, they are not likely to cause any ionization. So I don't think there will be any harmful effects uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, these radiations okay so sir uh, if we compare 5g and iot internet of things so are the two things different or they are related with each other in some extent no internet of things is a kind of a uh, is kind of a use case which will actually connect the billions of things uh, 
and 5G can provide the underlying infrastructure for realizing the Internet of Things. Internet of Things means, you know, uh, not only the human beings are talking to each other, but things like appliances, uh, sensors, uh, they are also connected to each other. So, 5G will provide the infrastructure for realizing the Internet of Things. Okay. So, sir, uh, when 4G was launched, just after that or maybe before that, some work was started on 5G. Now, we are working on 5G. So, what about 6G? Have we started working on 6G also? Yes, I think uh, the work in the 6G standardization has already begun, uh, both in the ITU and also in 3GPP. Currently, we are at a stage where we are defining the requirements that what should be the requirements of a 6G standard, etc. So, uh, and then, you know, uh, the work will begin in terms of uh, standardizing technologies and protocols which will meet those requirements. So, the work has already begun. It will take few years uh, before we get to the 6G standard. Sir, uh, I read about you many things and I was really inspired by research work done by you or your group also. Thank you. So, you have published one book also. So, can you tell us something about that book? Who should read that book? No, my that book is a more like a research monograph on the mobility management in LTE networks. Uh, so, it is uh, being co-authored, it, it was co-authored with uh, uh, one of my former PhD students uh, and it was based uh, out of uh, her work. Uh, so, that work uh, is uh, uh, more uh, related to our research where uh, we are uh, uh, exploring uh, the protocols for mobility management uh, in the LTE 4G networks. Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, you also talked about some group, frugal uh, group. You have formed some group also. Yes. So, please tell us about that group also. Yeah, so it is a working group under IEEE. So, the way in which IEEE standards activity work is that they form a working group. So, there is a working group called frugal 5G. Uh, you can uh, search on the IEEE Standards Association website, you will find that group. Currently, the chair of the working group is Pranav Jha, who happens to be uh, one of my research staff in our research group. He is uh, being the working group chair. Uh, anyone now, of course, uh, uh, that work has come to almost a completion. Uh, it was going on for last uh, two years. So, anyone can contribute in IEEE, any individual can join the working group. Okay. and uh, could have contributed in terms of ideas. Uh, so, that is that IEEE standards, uh, you know, process allows that. No, no. Uh, if someone doing research in this field, 5G yeah. or maybe related to frugal 5G. Yeah. So, uh, he can join, he or she can join that. Yes, 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 yes. So, how they can join? No, as I told you that uh, there is a website. So, you can look into the websites and then there is a mailing address. So, you can, one can mail and explore express uh, his or her interest in joining the working group. Okay. So, sir, it was nice discussion with you and we got met in many good important points from you. Any last message to the student community who are pursuing their research work like through PhD, direct PhD, MS or MTech yeah. from your side? No, uh, so uh, I would just like to say that uh, currently, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities uh, uh, for us to do cutting edge research uh, in the technology. Uh, we are not only, uh, we were of course uh, one of the single largest uh, markets, uh, but now, you know, we are in a position to drive the technology, to develop the technology indigenously and become uh, a Atma Nirbhar Bharat in telecom in the true sense. We are now having 4G uh, technology which is indigenously developed. We are having 5G technology which is indigenously developed. And there is a lot, uh, a lot more opportunities now for young researchers and entrepreneurs to develop the uh, future technologies and contribute to the uh, future uh, standardization efforts at the global scale. So, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And uh, one more point I want to add that uh, IEEE BOG. Okay. So, in that BOG, sir is the only member from India. Yeah, IEEE Standards Association BOG. I am the, I am currently. So, that is a 
matter proud for all of us so thank you so, thank so you. much sir thank for you. your valuable time thank you